Hello everyone and welcome to the 42nd Cocoa Programming Tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be covering how we can work with the NS Collection View class in Cocoa. So a collection view is very similar to how the Finder icon view works. So um, basically a collection view would just be a whole, this whole view here would be a collection view and the little items would be the collection view items. So little individual folders and the pictures here um, would be like the little items in the collection view. So it's a fairly simple concept. A collection view is just a collection of items and the collection view just displays them in kind of like a grid layout. Now, Finder definitely doesn't use NS collection view, so don't think that uh, you would get this nice, cool, smooth, you know, scroll behavior and all that because NS collection view uh, doesn't really, it's not, it's not what Finder uses. And if anything, it's one of the image uh, collection classes that it offers. But anyway, uh, with that, um, we're just going to be focusing on collection views for this tutorial. So the neat thing about a collection view though, uh, versus the finder layout is that collection views, you can put any different object that you want into a collection view. So uh, it's much easier just to show you how this works. So we'll go ahead and drag out a collection view and we'll drag it out like so. And we're going to use some auto layout for this tutorial. So um, go ahead and go to your little sidebar here. Go to your constraints and uh, select some of the constraints under the attributes here. We're going to set them to be zero so that they are flush with the side. Oops. Zero. And the last vertical here. Zero. There we go. So now that we have that, uh, we have our view here that's mainly aligned along the edges there. And we also want to add a button so that we can add new collection objects to our collection view. So you might be wondering, well, what the heck is, uh, what are we creating here? Well, we're going to be adding basically a bunch of student objects to this collection. So we're going to say add student. And basically this whole collection is just gonna be a student rating system. So it's gonna rate a student with a little star rating system on a scale of one to five. So if you're a teacher out there and you're watching this, this is a great tool for judging your students. So anyway, it's really not, please don't use it. But anyway, with that, uh, if we go back over to our bar thingy over here, we can see that we also created two different pieces when we dragged out the collection view. So there are very important ones. There's the collection view item, which is the NS view controller for the little view item, which is this thing here. So the collection view item controls basically this item and this view will interface with this collection view item when it goes to ask for its different information. But we'll go ahead and uh, lay out what this looks like. So we'll go ahead and add our label, call this name, and we'll go ahead back out here, add a text field, like so. Drag that out, la -di da And if we wanna get a nice little, you know, star rating system, we just type in level. Anyway, you'd be like, what the heck? That is not a star. And you're right, it's not but now it is just by changing it to the rating system in your attributes. State, we want it to be editable. We want a maximum of five stars. And we also want to hit command equal sign. And this will just resize your object to be the appropriate size for, in this case, the maximum number of stars would be five. So it just resizes the object so that it would be centered if five stars were there. All right, so there we go. We got our object and we can do that. And um, so there we go. We got everything we wanted there. So um, now that we have that, this basically represents the items that are gonna be displayed inside our collection view. And so with that in mind, we also wanna kinda try to figure out what we're gonna be displaying here. So in this view we have our student object and so we want to have a student model object which will be 
objects that can be created and stored in an array. So we're gonna have a student object, and we're also gonna create an app controller to contain an NS mutable array that can hold all these student objects. So let's go ahead and kind of get coding a little bit here. We'll add a student object, and we'll just add that to our project here. And we'll add a property, strong, and a string, name. The other property is going to be our rating, which is just gonna be an int, so rating. We can flip over to the implementation and we're gonna synthesize our name and the backing instance variable will just be underscore name. Synthesize our rating and again, we'll just say underscore rating. So the last step we're gonna do with the student is make and we're gonna override our init method. So our init method, uh, I'm sure you are all very familiar with how this works by now. If you're not, there's many tutorials on how we use this init method. Anyway, um, with that, we want to set up our student here to have a default name of something dear to my heart, Nil Billy. It's really not, I've never used that before, I don't even know. You're probably surprised it wasn't Yoda, if anything, but anyway, underscore rating. And um, Nil Billy is not that bright, so he's gonna be two, star rating of two. And I uh, will just return self. All right, there we go. So we have got our you know nice little student uh, default laid out here with our init method. And that's all the good stuff. We created properties for the student instead of just instance variables because we are going to be using bindings in uh, coming up and we need properties in order to work with bindings. So anyway, uh, with that, the next step is to uh, add our app controller so that we can create our NS mutable array that will hold on to all these student objects. So app controller, <clears throat> and we will add that to our lesson 42. There we go, app controller, and we're going to add an IB outlet to our NS array controller, which I haven't created yet, but I will shortly, but we're just gonna create an IB outlet to that. And from there, I'm just going to add also a property, we a strong one, to our NS mutable array. And this is gonna hold all of our students, so I'll just call it students. If we flip over to the implementation, synthesize the students, gets underscore students. All right, so now that we have all that nice laid out, we can flip back over to our main menu nib. We'll connect a few things up here. So first off, we gotta add our app controller. So we'll add an object, drag that out, and reset the class to app controller. And we also wanna add, of course, an array controller. So if we type in array, drag out an array controller, and there we go. So uh, one thing is we're gonna just connect our app controller right now, that IB outlet for our array controller to that array controller. All right, so there we go. Oh, God, Xcode, I hate you. Ah, it would crash, just standard, you know. I swear, Xcode 4 just doesn't like me. All right, let's see if I can get a nice way for this to work without completely killing me every time. I haven't had very luck with this, I swear it's a bug, but anyway. Um, well, let's see, how can I connect this? I'll be smart about it. Outlet, there, Ray controller. Aha, there we go, magic, see? Just just changing the way sometimes makes it work. That's how great Xcode 4 is. Anyway, <laughs> enough about that. Uh, let's move on back to the tutorial. So uh, we had an array controller here. And um, anyway, array controller, we want to set up the student class with this. So student, under our attributes inspector, the array controller has to understand the object that it's creating because it really doesn't know the student object. So we have to give it some hints about what it contains. So name, and also has a rating. And so those are 
going to be the understandable components there. And with that, um, now we can go ahead and bind the content array of our array controller to our app controller's NS mutable array. So we'll just ask that for its students. And again, the students is just the name of the NS mutable array in our array controller, or sorry, our app controller. So again, the array controller is binding its array content array. That's just how it holds on to its contents. It binds that to the app controller's students NS mutable array. The next part is for the collection view. So the collection view has to get its contents from somewhere and it gets it from the array controller. So if we select once and select again, we get our collection view, which is inside a scroll view. So if we go to the bindings inspector here as well, for the content of our collection view, we want to go to the array controller, bind that, and we want to get the arranged objects, which are just basically the array of objects. All right, so that'll get the objects that are in the array controller. And now the last real binding step here is to get these little UI components bound to their proper values. So we go to the bindings inspector for our uh, text field, for example, and we will bind these to our collection view item. And again, the collection view item is the little NS view controller. So we'll bind that. We'll say bind to that, and we want to get the represented object. And I'll talk about that in just a second, but we'll bind that to the name. And we'll go back to the rating and do the exact same thing. So we'll go to the collection view item. We want to bind to its represented object, and we want to get the rating. All right, so what is this represented object? Well, the represented object is simply going to be the student. So this collection view item is basically representing an individual student. The represented item is a, or represented object rather, is part of the NS view controller class where you can uh, connect the NS view controller to what it represents. And that represented item is going to be connected to one of our objects in our collection view. So basically our collection view item, every individual collection view item is going to be connected to a specific student, which is the represented object. And then our view from our NS view controller is just going to be asking its view controller for that value. So it wants to know what the student's name is and it wants to know what its student rating is. So that's that. The next part is uh, not bindings related. We want to add this student or we want to tell the student uh, how to add objects. So we'll say in our array controller, just add student, send the add message to our array controller and that will add a new student for us. The last part that we're going to do is in our array controller implementation for awake from nib. So we're going to just create a, a default st uh, a student here just to show that you can add your own students in code. And so we'll just say student s gets student alloc in it. There we go s.name, we'll set it to be something other, Lucas, and s. Uh, s. what the heck is, there we go, rating, I totally lost my brain, so obviously I'm not a 5, so I'll give myself a 4 for that, and uh, we'll say, um, we want to also create our students array here, so we want to set up our students NS mutable array, because we created the property for it, but we didn't create the physical object, which is the important part. So we want to actually create the NS mutable array somewhere. We'll do that just in our awake from nib and alloc in it. And the last part is to, of course, add the student to the array controller. So that's why we made that IB outlet to the array controller, just so we could add an object. And we'll say, um, do, 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 we want to add the S, which is our student object. So uh, just here, the important part is really just creating this student's NS mutable array. You have to do that somewhere just so you actually have an array. All right, so that is that. And uh, that basically sums up everything. So I think I made all the, connect the correct connections there, but we'll find out. So there we go. Lucas is our default. Or our one that we added in code there. We got four star rating. 
and there's a bunch of nilbillies after me. So there we go. If we scroll this through, you can see that they change their position. And that basically is a collection view. You can tab through and change their names. And there you go. So that's basically, uh, you know, different things. And yeah, so there we go. That's, uh, that's that. So um, just to resummarize here what we just went through, we had our collection view, which is basically consistent of, well, actually, let's just start from the top here. So we had the collection view. Collection view has three components, the collection view itself, then it houses all the little collection view items or their specific views. So the collection view items are these view controllers that control the individual views. And the collection view items are important because they are, they always have a represented object, which is connected to a specific student. So the collection view gives every collection view item a specific represented object or a specific student to represent. And then our, our view from there can just ask the view controller or its view controller for that specific information in the bindings. And then our array controller is the next important part uh, for getting all that information to the collection view. So the array controller, we just set the content array, because the array controller has to understand where it's saving all its stuff. Then the array controller, just uh, we specify the student that it's going to be creating. And then our collection view can easily take that information, excuse me, from the array controller. Then the last few parts where the app controller is important because it houses all the student objects in that array. And then the student object itself is just uh, what's represented in this view. So anyway, I hope you understood everything in this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I know it's been a long time since uh, the tutorials have come out, but I left my, or didn't leave, but I had to bring my computer to the Apple store to fix a uh, speaker. So anyway, that was the long delay on that. But anyway, more tutorials are on the way. I'm going to be talking about uh, submitting or uh, distribution for your application. So that includes Mac App Store and developer ID. So code signing, all this stuff is going to be coming up in very uh, tutorials very shortly. So that's kind of next on my agenda of things to do. So uh, you can look forward to those uh, sometime this week. Anyway, I will see you guys next tutorial.